Okay, next up we have uh, Dr. Dexter Watts from USDA ARS, and Dexter is going to talk about gypsum as a best management practice for reducing phosphorus loss from agricultural fields. I also like to acknowledge my co-author on uh, this presentation. Uh, we do most of our gypsum work together, Alan Porter. Um, water quality is a major concern in the U.S. Uh, EPA has uh, stated that almost half of the rivers, lakes, and streams are impaired, and agriculture is a significant contributor to water quality impairment as a result of phosphorus loss from agricultural fields. Um, thus, uh, we're looking at different management practices to try to uh, reduce some of this phosphorus losses contributing to, to uh, algae growth. Here's a picture of what we hope to achieve, and this is what we don't want. Um, in the southeastern U.S., um, phosphorus loss from agriculture fields is a major concern because of the broiler industry. More than two-thirds of the broiler, bro broiler production occurs in the southeast. Uh, Georgia's ranked number one, followed by Alabama, Arkansas, North Carolina's number four, and Mississippi, number five. So in these regions, there's quite a bit of poultry litter is being applied to agricultural fields that have the potential uh, for fossils to be lost from these fields. Uh, some of our research has shown that uh, fossils, uh, gypsum can potentially reduce fossils loss from agricultural fields. Um, so gypsum, there's two main sources of gypsum that's primarily being sold uh, to agricultural markets. There's mine gypsum and then there's synthetic gypsum. And the synthetic, synthetic gypsum primarily comes from uh, the byproduct of a uh, burning coal. Essentially, uh, in the coal industry, I mean in the electric power industry, where they use coal, uh, they use calcium carbonate uh, in their scrubbers to remove the sulfur that's being burned from the coal. And the chemical reaction is calcium sulfur. Uh, there's been different benefits of using gypsum on the soil as it improves soil properties such as improved water infiltration, uh, it can reduce soil erosion and uh, reduce crusting. It can be used as a calcium and sulfur source. Uh, it's widely used in the peanut producing industry as a calcium source. Uh, it's also, there's been some research that shows that it can reduce subsoil acidity and uh, it can help the roots have more extensive rooting and also can be used to reduce water runoff, I mean, reduce contaminants and runoff. And it's a lot lower than my gypsum. Uh, some of our, some of the previous work by my colleague uh, looked at the impacts of using different soil amendments on phosphorus loss. Um, this is, in this study, they did a greenhouse study where they uh, put sod down, they applied dairy manure, and then they applied different uh, amendments to the sod and see if it could reduce, these amendments could reduce phosphorus loss. Um, here's the control. He compared uh, lime and gypsum and then iron sulfate. And lime and gypsum uh, worked well at reducing phosphorus loss. Um, this is at the 10 minute interval after the runoff began. Uh, so we carried this a little further and we wanted to look at this under uh, some pastures. Um, at one of our research stations in North Alabama, we applied four tons uh, per acre poultry litter to a pasture and we applied different um, gypsum amendments. We applied mine gypsum, flue gas gypsum, and some of the old flue gas gypsum mixed with black ash. And we looked at the water uh, soluble phosphorus, that the water extractable phosphorus from these soils. So we applied the poultry litter in May, the first of May, and we went back and took some soil samples in August. And here is the concentration of phosphorus concentration from zero to two inch, two to six inch. And in this treatment we had, here's the control, and we had one, five, and 10 tons per acre gypsum. And gypsum, with increasing rates of gypsum, we reduced phosphorus with increasing rates of gypsum. 
we went back again in November of 08 and we saw a similar trend. Uh, the concentration of phosphorus wasn't as high, but we still saw the same trend where uh, water extractable phosphorus was reduced with increasing rates of uh, gypsum, regardless of the gypsum source. Uh, we looked at this again in uh, April of 2009, uh, and we still saw a similar trend. Um, in May, we went back and we put out four tons of poultry litter again. And then we went, but we didn't put out any more or any additional uh, gypsum. So we went back and looked at what happened. I mean, we saw a similar trend, but the trend was not as great. So it was suggesting that if we do, if gypsum does reduce phosphorus, soluble phosphorus loss, uh, it needs to be applied every time you apply your poultry litter. Uh, here again in October, we saw the same trends we saw uh, back in. Uh, July. We also looked at this under different using rainfall simulation studies. Um, we had a, this is a, where we could create a, a water runoff with using rainfall simulation. And this is just with four tons of gypsum and no poultry litter. And this is with no gypsum and no poultry litter. And you can see just by adding gypsum. Uh, to the plot that it increased the clarity of the water runoff. Um, in this study, we looked at uh, the impact of gypsum on different, uh, at different runoff times. We looked at uh, applying six tons of poultry litter, and we looked at runoff at initially after applying the poultry litter and the gypsum, and we went back six weeks later, and we went back at the end of a growing season. This is for the initial runoff. Uh, here are the concentrations. Here's our tonnage of gypsum we apply. And this is at the 10 minute, 30 minute, and 60 minute interval. And gypsum tended to uh, decrease phosphorus loss with increasing concentration up until around two tons. Uh, four tons uh, wasn't much better than two tons per acre. This was on Bermuda grass pasture. And this is the cumulative of the entire runoff event. So looking at the two tons per acre rate for the cumulative runoff event, we saw a 58% reduction in phosphorus loss with the runoff, soluble phosphorus, dissolved phosphorus. We went back six weeks later, we saw the similar trend that we saw the initial except concentrations were a lot less. Uh, again here, at the two tons per acre rate, we saw 50 percent reduction six weeks uh, after we applied the poultry litter to gypsum. And then at the end of the growing season, which was six months after applying the gypsum and the poultry litter, we, gypsum was still effective at reducing phosphorus loss. And with the cumulative, we saw a reduction of 34 uh, percent phosphorus at the two ton per acre rate. We also uh, did a few concentrated flow studies where we looked at, we created a concentrated flow of water that went over the plot and we collected the runoff. And with this study, uh, we applied poultry litter to the plot and we applied uh, gypsum just to the buffer area. And this was in the fescue pasture. When we just had the buffer there by itself with no gypsum, we had a reduction of about uh, 16 to 17 percent uh, reduction in phosphorus. When we applied the gypsum to the buffer areas, we had anywhere between 30 to 40 percent reduction in soluble phosphorus or phosphorus in the field. Uh, we also wanted to look at this under a uh, row crop system. Uh, so we looked at different row. We got two row crops. We had a no-till and a conventional till. We also applied some of the gypsum to uh, buffer area. Um, this is a picture of our uh, setup for the no-till plots here. Uh, this is a picture of our conventional till plots. With this one we applied the poultry litter and the gypsum to the whole plot on this step, this side and the one where we had the buffer area we applied just the poultry litter to the top and then the gypsum all into the buffer. We conducted rainfall simulations with this study initially after applying the treatments and then after six weeks later too. Uh, this is the no-till 
for the initial runoff. Here are, here's our control. We have four tons of gypsum, no poultry litter. We have poultry litter applied at 200 pounds of nitrogen per acre for the corn. And uh, this is increasing rates of gypsum. Uh, as you can see, regardless of the buffer area or the, uh, the buffer areas in the orange, regardless of the buffer or it being applied to the entire plot, we saw a reduction with increasing rates of gypsum showing that in, instead of applying the gypsum to the entire field, you can apply it to the buffer area of the row crop system and potentially reduce phosphorus uh, Under the conventional system, we saw a similar trend that we saw under the no-till. We waited six weeks later and we went back and ran on the plots again. And after six weeks for the no-till, uh, other than the concentrations being a lot less, we saw the same trend that we saw uh, initially, both the entire plot and the buffer area reduced phosphorus loss with the increasing rates of gypsum. In the conventional till, um, we saw that uh, phosphor concentrations tended to decrease with increasing rates of gypsum, but our uh, buffer area tended to have higher phosphorus loss than we did initially and possibly because some of the sediment got into the buffer area and it ended up mineralizing and becoming soluble over time. And that pretty much ends my presentation. In conclusion, uh, gypsum can be used as a, an amendment to reduce phosphorus loss from soil in the pasture and row cropping systems. Phosphorus loss generally decrease with increasing rates of gypsum. Applying the gypsum to the grass buffer strip may be an effective management practice to reduce some phosphorus loss. And effectively, gypsum effectively reduce phosphorus loss and successive and succeeding runoff events. Any questions? Gypsum, the calcium binds to the phosphorus, and so it forms an insoluble uh, bond there with the soluble phosphorus. So in that case, if your phosphorus, if the phosphorus, or if your pH was really low, uh, say maybe five, for example, do you still see the same effect of gypsum? Uh, well, that's probably a mute question because most farmers keep their pH above five and a half in our area because, you know, it, it decreases their yield when it gets below five and a half. But, I mean, it, it may not be as effective under uh, acidic conditions. So. Did y'all measure yields in these studies? And if so, did you get enough yield increases to pay for the gypsum? Okay. we. Apply this to cotton, corn, wheat, soybean, canola, sorghum, <laughs> Bermuda grass, fescue. And to be honest, we haven't seen any yield increases. So it's just a cost. Yeah. But it's priceless because you reduce some phosphorus loss. Can you do this? Can you add more each year? Um, uh, more gypsum each year for fertilizer and, and uh, repeat this year after year after year? Um, you you talk about in a study? I mean, uh, well, we suggest if you apply poultry litter, you need to apply gypsum to bind up the fossils. If not, then it won't. And you can do that the second year, the third year, the fourth year? Yeah. But uh, any expectations that over time something may happen and the, um, and the gypsum would release the material? Um, you talk, release, release the phosphorus? Yeah. Um, we haven't looked at it from that standpoint, but I think once it's bound, it's not going to be lost that easily. Uh, the only problem, though, we did look at 
one five up to ten tons per acre gypsum. Applying that to sandy soils, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that that much at that high rate. We didn't see any negative effect there, but it can leach out your potassium and magnesium in, your, in sandy soils. I, I think it, it can happen if, you, if somebody switches from manure as their as their fertilizer to commercial fertilizers like ammonium nitrate or any kind of ammonium source, then and don't line, then it gets pH reduced like you were talking about, and calcium phosphates aren't stable uh, under slightly acidic to acidic conditions, and so they, they can dissolve and release that phosphorus. We got a, a study we did, an incubation study over a year at different pHs, treating poultry litter with different compounds, including calcium, and at, that, at lower pHs, that calcium phosphate is not stable, it will dissolve. Very stable under high pH conditions, you know, but you get low pH and it's going to release it. My, my question is related to that. In one of your slides, you were showing that you got the reduction in phosphorus loss until about the two ton per acre application rate. But then once you went to four ton, it actually went up. It, it's a function of the uh, regression equation. The vector just fell off and it averaged back up, but it really was not. It could have been a linear fit or down. But it was a better fit for a, because it, the effectiveness is, is, uh, is reduced at two different between four tons and two tons. So you get a curvilinear response. But it could have just as well been a linear response if it would have been, you wouldn't have had that upward trend. So it's just an, it's just an illusion from the. From the um, and you guys measured the pH in the soil at the rates? Yeah, the pH should have changed as a neutral salt. But doesn't that flue gas have some calcium oxide in it as well? Doesn't it have a little bit higher pH than just gypsum? Yeah, uh, but it's, now, it's pretty uh, slight, 98% yeah. gypsum. And yeah, that's, that's what they sell it at. It's probably more you know, cleaner than that because if they drop, if the equipment gets very much below 98%, it won't work right. So they have to make, make sure that it's stable at that higher level. So there's, it can have a little bit, but it's Still very neutral one. So, go ahead. In Ohio, we played with this a little bit. We had a large increase in the amount of nitrogen leaving the field. Um, you know, did you guys measure nitrates in any of your work here? Um, yeah, we didn't see any increases. <laughs> we didn't see any increases in nitrates. The ammonia we did. Ammonia? Yeah. yeah. We saw a little bit of increase in ammonia. Kevin Gay was doing the work in Ohio. Right. It was quite a bit of an increase. So we don't worry so much about the ammonium, so the nitrogen side, and, uh, but we're worried about the phosphorus. But I know that everyone in the southern part of Ohio feeds into the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, we are going to stop there with questions. Thank you.